All right, folks, it is time to decide on a 308 barrel for our AR-10. The 308 barrel we've been shooting needs pulled out and replaced with something better. And if you need details on why, you need to go back to our previous four videos on the subject. So we're not gonna dwell on the past, we're gonna focus on the future. The future is a new barrel. I have whittled things down to the final five options and I wanna talk through each of these five options and I wanna ask for your help in deciding which barrel to go with. I feel like we've got a really good base platform. The Aero Precision M5E1 setup has gone together well and seems like it is a quality setup. So I wanna put a really nice barrel into this guy. I'm committed to 308 long term here and I want a barrel that's really gonna shoot well and I want one that's gonna shoot well with a variety of different bullets. This project has been entirely funded by viewer donations and we've got enough money left over to buy something that's gonna shoot well. And I think we ought to go ahead and spend the money on something that we can feel certain is going to shoot well. So, okay, let's switch over to a computer view and uh, let's walk through our five different options. All right, first, let's go back to the last video where we ran a couple polls at the end. The first poll was what barrel length we should go with, and this was a landslide. 210 votes for a 20 inch barrel, and exactly 100 votes for 18 and something else, 81 and 19. So, overwhelming win for 20 inches, that's what we'll be going with for 308. The other poll was pretty interesting. I threw out a couple brands to see what you guys had to say. Surprised to see Faxon winning. 108 votes for Faxon, 103 votes for a Schillen, and 61 votes for a Criterion. I was surprised there wasn't more support for the proof research. The stainless steel proof research barrels aren't quite as expensive as I had thought they were, and I thought those uh, I thought that might be a popular poll option, but it wasn't. So here's what we're gonna do from this. Black Hole Weaponry didn't get votes and Proof Research didn't get votes, so they are gone. The top three options, Faxon, Schillen, and Criterion are going to move forward into today's poll. So I wanna come up with two other options to include for today. Now I wanna show you the last two that I eliminated. Here's one of them. I strongly considered the, uh, the Rainier Arms Ultra Match Barrel. Really nice barrels. Got these crazy looking gold uh, barrel extensions. Nice looking barrel. I'm sure it's a great shooting barrel. Two reasons why I finally decided to drop it from contention. One is price. It's a little bit pricey. It does not come with a head spaced bolt and it's $579.95. A little bit pricey. The other thing I really didn't like about this is that it uses an 800 gas block, a 0.800 inch gas block. That's very weird you know, 0 0.750, 0 0.875, 0 0.936, those are standard sizes. 0 0.800 is some weird Rainier Arms thing, I guess. So weird size gas block, a little bit too pricey. I'm sure it's a great shooting barrel, but I'm going to remove it from contention. The other guy that isn't gonna make the cut is the uh, Lil, Lilja, Lil, Lilja, Lilja. Lilja, I don't know. However you say it, I've decided to go ahead and eliminate it. The profile on this guy is maybe just a touch thinner than I would like to see. It does use a uh, 0 0.750 inch gas block. So a little bit thinner on the profile than I would like. And also this is an 11 inch twist, three groove configuration in 308 Winchester. Pretty much everything else we're gonna be talking about today is going to be a one in 10 twist. Now I think a one in 11 twist would be just fine. I've done a little bit more research. A commenter in the last video mentioned that I was maybe putting too much stock in twist rate. So one in 10 twist, not an absolute requirement, but still it's another reason to decide against the Lil Lilja, I guess. Whatever, it's a tough decision, but this guy is gone. So what I wanna talk about are the ones that are going to make the cut. So we know from the previous poll, we've got a Faxon, We've got a shillin' drop-in from Midway. Yeah, there it is. A shillin' drop-in from Midway. And Criterion was the other one that was in the top three in the poll. Now the 20 inch options from Criterion, there's two different places I could go with. Fulton Armory here is the first place. This is a one in 10 twist barrel. It is an M110 profile. See if I can find a picture of it. There it is. So a little bit thicker than like that, uh, that little Joe we were looking at. So a little thicker, a little heavier profile, which I'm considering a good thing for my needs, and one in 10 twists. So the Fulton Armory is looking pretty good to me. 
The other option is over at Brownells. There is this guy right here. It is a 20 inch hybrid rifle stainless. Pretty standard stuff. This is also a one in 11 twist, which like I mentioned, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, but it is a difference between the two options we've got here, between uh, Brownells and Fulton Armory. This guy's a one in 11, the other guy is a one in 10. This is also a, a little bit lighter barrel. Let's see if I can get an expanded view here. Yeah, the resolution on these pictures is pretty crappy, but it's a little bit thinner here. Looks a little bit more like that, uh, that Lilja profile, the lighter profile. This does also use a 0 0.750 inch gas block. So I'm kind of leaning towards the Fulton Armory, just the heavier barrel profile. We get the one in 10 twist we want, and it's a good looking barrel. So this guy is $329.95, and we do not get a head spaced bolt. So let's see, where was I? Oh, I was talking about, okay, so the, the two more options I'm going to add, one is going to be JP Enterprises, and the other is going to be Krieger. Now I wanna start by talking about JP Enterprises, because this might change the discussion beyond just barrels. Here we are, here's the main page. So these JP Supermatch barrels, I've always heard very good things about these barrels, very nicely made. And one thing that's pretty cool about, these, about the JP is right here, all Supermatch barrels come with an individually headspaced JP enhanced bolt assembly and can be purchased in black Teflon or one of several stainless finishes, whatever. The, the main part of that was the individually headspaced JP enhanced bolt. I wanna talk about JP bolts here a little bit because I've always considered JP bolts to be absolutely the very best you could get. Here we go, bolts and bolt parts, JP enhanced bolt. So this is the JP enhanced bolt. Very, very, very well-made bolts. Like the Ferrari of bolts here, folks. The aero precision bolt we've been using it's a fine bolt. It seems to be working pretty well so far, but this is on a whole other level of quality and you really have to pay for it. Let's go down here to the prices. Yep, the standard JP enhanced bolt for 308 is $159.95. Now, when we go back and look at the actual barrel, I probably should have done that first. The barrel with the head spaced bolt is going to be $479. So if you consider $160 of that, is an exceptionally nice bolt that is already head spaced to the barrel, JP becomes very attractive to me. Now here's the thing. If we go back up here to the top, you'll see there's another section here called high pressure bolts. Now the high pressure bolt, yeah, let's see if we can pop open a picture here. There it is. Now the high pressure bolt is not such a huge deal here in 308, but for our 6.5 Creedmoor work, that's also coming, right? We've got a brand new Ballistic Advantage 6.5 Creedmoor barrel that we're going to be building a second upper with. A JP high pressure bolt would be a big upgrade for that cartridge. Because if you follow my 6.5 Creedmoor videos, you'll know that with small primer brass, we've already run into a lot of problems with cratered primers. And that's exactly what this bolt is all about. It's got, an, it's got a small, firing pin hole, which you can't see here. And it uses a special firing pin with a very small tip. And let's see if I can go back one here for the main write up. Here you go, virtually eliminates primer flow and pierced primers. Now the high pressure bolts are even a little bit more expensive. The, the bolt and firing pin here are $199.95. So this is $40 more expensive than the standard JP bolt. So let's just keep that in mind. So JP has some super awesome bolts that are either $160 or $200. And the high pressure bolt here, the, uh, the $200 would be a really nice upgrade for our platform. So let's go back to the discussion of barrels. So back to the, the, the super match barrels. If we go down to the 308 section, here we go. This is what they offer in 308. There are two options uh, for 20 inchers. One is a medium contour and one is a heavy contour. Now, if you'll notice the twist rate on these guys is one in 11.25 inches. And from my research, it looks like this one in 11.25 inches is just perfect for the 168 grain and 175 grain bullets, which really make up the most popular options for an AR-10 and 308, right? So I think the one in 11.25 option might not necessarily be something to uh, avoid but it's definitely something to think about. It would limit our ability to 
experiment with heavier bullets and that would kind of suck. So I was a little bit bummed about this until I finally decided to scroll back up the page and go to their clearance section. If we go to the clearance and scroll down to the 308 Winchester stuff, there are three options. Now, this third one here, this column right here, where it says JP small profile, that is a muzzle brake or compensator. So we don't want that. We're gonna be running a suppressor most of the time. So it's looking like these two right here are going to be our best options. We've got a medium contour and a heavy contour. And these guys are only $479. And let's see, back up to the top, you'll see that each includes an individually headspaced JP enhanced bolt. So $479, one in 10 twist, includes a bolt. This is really looking like the best option. The only thing I'm not 100% certain about here is whether or not the barrels are threaded. It doesn't specifically say that it's threaded, it just says that it doesn't come with a compensator. So I'll need to get on the phone with them and get clarification on this guy. Another thing I'm really hoping, so there's $40 difference between the standard bolt that this uh, barrel would come with and the high pressure bolt. So I'm hoping maybe I could get them on the phone, get them to upgrade me to one of the high pressure bolts for you know a $40 or $50 upcharge or something. And we could turn this $479 clearance barrel into a maybe $520 package that includes the high pressure bolt. So that's the hope. I think this, uh, this medium contour, one in 10 twist, will be our, our best option for the, uh, for the JP stuff. So being completely honest, this, this is the option that I'm finding the most attractive right now. If you guys think this is a bad move, please talk me out of it. But I think JP is a good option. So the other new option on the poll is going to be Krieger. Now Krieger has a couple, couple options. They've got this Krieger Direct, where they've got, I guess, you know, pre-made pre barrels that can ship quickly. We can also do a custom, you know, build with a different profile or a different twist rate or things of that nature but the lead time page says it's like four or five months. So this is the best option in the standard Krieger Direct options that I think would be able to, uh, to ship you know, pretty much immediately. It is 20 inch barrel, one in 10 twist, pretty heavy profile. Yeah, it looks straight behind the, uh, the gas block. This also uses an, uh, a 0.875 inch gas block. And back to the JP, yeah, this guy we were just talking about, I'm pretty sure it uses a 936 gas block. So the JP and the Krieger will use big gas blocks and everything else we're talking about will use uh, 0 0.750 inch gas blocks. Another good thing in the write-up for the Krieger, it, it mentions that the, the chambers are cut to match JP bolt head spacing. So this guy does not include a bolt, but it looks like a JB might be a good option to go with if we do go with a Krieger. One thing I definitely want to ask you guys about is down here, the finished chamber option. There's two options, 308 Winchester and 308 Winchester Obermeyer. And my research on the 308 Winchester Obermeyer shows that it's just a, a tighter chamber, a tighter chambered 308, a little bit tighter uh, dimensions, a bit of a match version of the 308 chamber. I think for a gas gun like this, I would just want to stick with the standard old 308. I don't want to get into anything fancy. Like I'm not sure how tight like the neck dimensions are or stuff in the Obermeyer chamber, but I don't want to get up get in a situation where you know we have to neck turn our brass or we have function problems in our gas gun due to the chamber being too tight. But if this is a situation where I should definitely go with the Obermeyer, let me know. Or if you have uh, additional knowledge on this topic, I'd love to hear your feedback. So that's the Krieger option. There's nothing really exceptional to say about it. It's exactly what we want. A 20 inch barrel, one in 10 twist, and Kriegers are, are certainly legendary for accuracy. $535, this would be our most expensive option, especially if we, we decided to go ahead and add in the JP high pressure bolt. We're looking at about $735. So a Krieger would be pricey, but a Krieger would be pretty sweet. The other two options are over at Midway, there's this Schillen drop-in. It does include a head-spaced bolt. They call this the full-length tactical contour. It does have a uh, 0.750 inch gas block. So this is a bit, a bit of a light profile. 
not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying it's, it's not really something that I necessarily need. I'm not going to concern myself too much with barrel weight here, but I just, yeah, I feel like the, the thicker profile barrels might fit my purposes a little bit better and, you know, take away the guesswork a little bit as far as barrel heat goes as we work up loads. There's nothing really all that remarkable about this guy. Well, one thing is the bolt. It doesn't mention what brand the bolts are. So I went over to uh, Shillin's website and they actually have a section about this barrel. This is it right here in the list. The full length tactical contour, 20 inches in length, 750 gas block. They show a retail price of 525. Over at Midway, it is 489.99. And Midway is the only place I could find anyone selling this. But here's what I found interesting. It does say that using our pre-threaded blanks, each barrel is assigned a bolt assembly and then chambered to the correct headspace for that bolt. Gas block shanks are machined to plus or minus a thousandth, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I guess the basics of what I'm saying is the bolts are assigned, numbered, and headspaced by Shillin. And I can't imagine a company like Shillin using super crappy bolts. So I wish they specified which bolt it is that comes with this barrel. But I think at least in this one situation, if we go with the Shillin, I probably wouldn't buy the JP bolt. And we would at least try the one that comes with this barrel first. I don't know. But that's, that's the Shillin. That only leaves one left. And that is the Faxon, which is leading the, the pull from the previous video. This is the 20 inch heavy fluted Faxon. Now these are nice looking barrels. I have one of these barrels in 6.5 Grendel. It's been an okay shooting barrel. We found some uh, bullets that it likes, but we've also had some videos where it shot kind of crappy. And I think if there's one barrel that's maybe a little bit odd in this discussion, it is this Faxon. It's not super cheap, you know, $349. It doesn't include a bolt. So it's not necessarily cheap, but I just don't know that like by reputation, it belongs in a discussion with Krieger, Schillen and JP. And in this discussion, really the, the criterion is a toss up for me. Everything I've read says they they're awesome and they shoot awesome and they're, they're hand lapped and they're made like the premium barrels. So I think dollar for dollar, we're probably getting more out of a Criterion than we are from a Faxon. I don't know. I guess the Faxon, it just makes me nervous. Like I, I feel like there's a reasonable chance, like maybe a 10 or 20% chance that if we went with Faxon, we could end up with a barrel that just really doesn't shoot that well. I think there's probably a 50% chance that it shoots pretty good. And then how, how much do we have left? Okay, the, the remaining 25% is that it would shoot excellent. Like it would just be a seriously good shooting barrel. Like I, yeah, 25% chance of that, 25% chance of a total flop and a 50% chance of mediocre performance. I don't know, I could be wrong. So not much to say about the facts and it's a 20 inch. It is a fluted barrel. All of their heavy match series barrels are fluted whether you want them to be or not. It does make them extremely light. Like man, my uh, 6.5 Grendel is super light. And if I was building an AR-10, that I knew I was gonna be lugging around the woods nonstop, or if it was a full-time hunting rifle, this would be way up near the top. Super light barrel, but I just feel like maybe some of the other options are better for our needs. So let me walk you how through I rank them. Right now, the option that sounds best to me is JP Enterprises here in the barrel clearance. I think if I could get, there we go, this medium profile barrel right here, and if I could get them to up, upgrade the bolt to a high pressure bolt, you know, it could be out the door for $550, have a super awesome JP barrel and a high pressure bolt to go along with it. Like that's pretty close to a can't miss option right there. That's, that's good stuff. I think my second option would be the Criterion barrel from Fulton Armory. Something about that profile. I really like this barrel. I have a pretty high confidence that the Criterion barrel will shoot well, like a little bit higher confidence than I had for Faxon. And the price is right. Like this, you know, so this is a $329 hand lapped Criterion where what was our price on Faxon $349, right? So the Fulton Armory is even cheaper than the Faxon. So if you're, if you're leaning toward the Faxon for budget reasons, then, you know, Fulton Armory might be a better choice. Remember, this is the one in 10 twist. The one over at Midway is one in 11 twist. So I'm gonna close this guy. We're just gonna forget about this. If you wanna talk me into going with the one in 11 twist, 
from Brownells, feel free to do so in the comments section, but I'm leaning towards the Fulton Armory. My number three option, I think, would be the Krieger. There's no downside here, except for cost, right? $535 for the basic barrel. If we go ahead and get a high pressure bolt from JP, we're all the way up to $734.95. So the price tag gets a little bit gnarly with Krieger, but I would have to say this is probably the very best can't miss option. Like we got a good chance of getting a Hummer that's just gonna shoot any bullet we throw at it, it's gonna shoot well. You could see that happening with a Krieger. So that's my third favorite. My fourth favorite would be the Shillam from Midway. Kind of similar to the Krieger in that I would have extremely high confidence that this would shoot well. Maybe a little bit more confident in the Krieger, but pretty darn confident in a Shillam. It's already almost 500 bucks, right? $489 and it comes with a bolt of questionable origin. That's one thing I, man, if this came with a JP bolt, this would be a whole different co uh, conversation. So it's expensive. So I don't really want to throw away the bolt and upgrade it to a JP after we've already spent this much money. Now, if we did, like, let's say we went ahead and bought this barrel and bought the high pressure JP bolt. We're looking at a total of $689.94, which is still cheaper than the Krieger, right? The Krieger with no bolt is more expensive than the Shillin that does include a bolt. So Shillin right now, my opinion, it's in fourth place. And fifth place is Faxon for all of the reasons I've already mentioned. I think this is our highest chance of failure and we're already spending a bunch of money. We might as well spend a bunch more and just go with uh, maybe something that's a little more, a little more likely to give us some success. So JP, I'll put them in the, the poll. I'll have them in order of my preference. So JP will be at the top, followed by the Criterion, then the Krieger, then the Schillen, and then the Faxon. And I did do a spreadsheet a little bit earlier, just playing around with the numbers and how much each one would cost if we included the JP high pressure bolt. And this is making the assumption that I'm gonna be able to call JP and get them to give me a bolt upgrade for a reasonable price, 40 or $50. And if, let's see, we've already kind of ruled out the criterion from Brownells. Let me move it out of the way here. So here are the five that are gonna be in the poll. And if we get the deal on the JP bolt from JP, then it actually ends up being the cheapest option overall. Is that confusing enough? But we're looking at 500 to $700 here. So this is not a small decision. Like this is a, it's a pretty big purchase. And this video is going up Sunday. I'm going to order this barrel on Monday. I don't want to sit around waiting. I want to get the barrel in hand. I want to get moving forward with 308. I can't wait to start playing around and shooting good groups from our AR-10. So if you guys will just let me know your opinions down in the comments section, please vote in the poll. You should have seen the, the, uh, the poll pop up in the top right hand corner of your screen or at the top if you're on mobile. Hopefully you can participate in the poll. There's a little circle with an I that if you click on that, it'll show you the poll questions and all of that junk. So I think that's where we'll leave it, folks. Thanks for all the help on this. Thanks for all of the donations and stuff that made it possible. Actually just had another big donation come in via PayPal after the last video. Somebody donated 150 bucks and said to put it towards the barrel budget. So this could absolutely not be happening without you guys. And I really appreciate it. So I'll see you next time.